Fenomena To the living God No one can deny That Jesus Christ So, I'm an interactive preacher. I like people to talk back to me. I like to hear that something hit your spirit and then God just exploded something on the inside of you. I don't mind the tears. I don't mind the shouting. I just ask that you agree with whatever God is saying to you tonight and let it explode on the inside of you. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, so my topic tonight is prayer that gets God's attention. God wants to hear from you. Prayer that gets God's attention, God wants to hear from you. So I'll be coming from a very familiar scripture today. I have about three or four scriptures, but we're going to start off in 1 Samuel chapter 1. 1 Samuel chapter 1, and we're going to go to verse 15. Amen? Amen? The word of God says, let me make sure which version do I have with me tonight. All right, King James Version. It says, now there was a certain man of Ramatham, Zophim, of Mount Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeraham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zoph, and Ephrathite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. And Penina had children, but Penina had... I'm sorry, Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. And this man went up out of his city yearly to worship (coughs) and to sacrifice unto the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. (coughs) And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priest of the Lord, were there. And when the time was that Elkanah offered, he gave Penina, his wife, to all her sons and her daughters' portions. But unto Hannah he gave a worthy portion, for he loved Hannah, but the Lord had shut up her womb. And her adversary also provoked her sore for, her, for to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. And as he did so year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, so she provoked her Therefore she wept and did not eat. And Elkanah said, and, Elk- and then said Elkanah, her husband, to Hannah, Why weepest thou, and why eatest thou not? And why is thy heart grieved? Am I not better to thee than ten sons? So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh and after they had drunk. Now Eli the priest sat upon a seat by a post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. Verse 11 says, And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thine handmaid a man child, then I will give unto him, and I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life. And there shall no razor come upon his head. And it came to pass as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli marked her mouth. Now Hannah, she spake in her heart, only her lips moved, but voice, her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she had been drunken. And Eli said unto her, how long will thou be drunken? Put away thy wine from thee. And Hannah answered and said, no, Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Hallelujah. Prayer that gets God's attention. God wants to hear from you. So this is a very familiar scripture. We've all heard about Hannah and we've heard about Samuel and we know Samuel, uh, Hannah really wanted to have a child because she loved her husband. It was an embarrassment for a Jewish woman not to be able to give birth. Bearing this made women ashamed. And she prayed to God and she went before God because she needed God's help. But before we get to the prayer, I want to talk about the very thing that sent her to the face of God. Has anybody in here ever been provoked before? 
Has there been something that ever came against you that got on your nerves and you said, God, I've been praying, but I got to take this thing to another level now. Because what I'm fighting now, I've not seen before, God. And I thank you for the provocation. Because had I not been provoked, had I not been provoked, would I see the goodness of God in the land of the living? Has anybody ever been there where you say, God, yeah, I've been praying, but there's yet another level to the prayer. There's yet another grace upon my life when it comes to praying. Oh, God, it's been good on this level, and I've seen you do some things. I've seen you work some miracles. See, you got to understand, Elkanah wasn't just a poor man, so Hannah had seen the blessings of God because it says he always gave her a double portion. And so even though she was getting a double portion to try to supplement, he was doing only what he knew how to do. To supplement for that barrenness, God says, no, baby, I'm going to use that adversary and that person that does not like you. I'm going to use that very thing to provoke you to get into my presence, to help you to come unto me, to help you to bear your heart unto me like you've never done it before. Is anybody ready to bear their soul and their heart for God like you've never done it before? If that's you, just lift up your hands and say, God. God, I'm ready. I'm ready. Hallelujah, Lord God. Ready. So she's provoked and she's agitated by Penina. Have any of y'all ever had a Penina before? Yeah. That na 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 na. That one that just won't get out of your face. That one that just wants to agitate you and wants to see you cry and wants to see you hurt and just laughs at the situation that you're in. Has anybody ever laughed at you before? And it's embarrassing and it can be heartbreaking. And depending on who the person is, it'll tear you apart and it'll try to break your spirit. So Penina's job was try to try to break Hannah's spirit. It was try to get her to a place where she didn't believe that God could do something for her. See, understand, you're always fighting against evil. Whether you want to or not, or whether you feel like you've engaged in the battle or not, there is always evil to fight. So she's coming against her, and she's agitating her. And I imagine her just parading her kids around Hannah and her kids just playing all in front of them and her just said, oh, look at Elka now. He's so good with those kids and oh, kids are wonderful and I love my kids and my kids are great. Oh, Hannah, oh, I'm sorry. You wouldn't understand this because you've never experienced this. So she's tormenting her and she's taunting her because she did not like her and she wasn't supposed to. The Bible calls her her adversary. Your adversary should never like you, women. Your, your adversary should not like you. Now, God says, I'll put you right in the midst of that thing that doesn't like you. And I'll let it keep agitating you. And I'll let it keep bothering you until you decide to do something about it. So... Verse 6 says, and her adversary also provoked her sore for to make her fret because the Lord had shut up her womb. She provoked her sore as to make her fret, as to make her fearful that God would never do it for her. How was the enemy trying to make you women of God fearful that trying to make you fearful that God won't do what it is you've been asking him to do? What is he trying to use to make you think that your God ain't greater, that your God ain't stronger? Y'all were singing it. Come on now. What is he doing to make you think that your God is not mighty and that he's not a made way maker and a miracle worker and a promise keeper? Come on now. Provocation will try to keep you stagnant. Yes, it will. It'll try to keep you in a place where you don't move, where you're just sorrowful of heart. What does the word say in Proverbs? Hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yes. 
So her heart was sick because she was afraid and she didn't think she could really do anything about it. But more so than anything, she was afraid that God wouldn't do it. And God says, some of you are there tonight. You're afraid that God won't do it. So you pray about it, but then you put it down because you say, well, is it wrong for me to keep praying about this thing? But baby, if it ain't manifested, why would you stop praying until you see what it is that you know that God wants to do? Had she stopped praying and had she not had that encounter when they went to sacrifice and was in the temple giving her heart to God when the priest of God thought she was drunk then would she not have been able to give birth to what had never been manifested in the earth before she birthed a prophet she birthed a prophet so her provocation had to be there from her enemy. Her enemy had to provoke her. She needed it because she was doing something that had never been done before. Panana didn't have any prophets that came out of her womb. God says, oh no, baby, a prophet just doesn't come on the scene because you want to have a baby. A prophet comes on the scene because the prophet has to deal with the issues of their generation, baby. They just can't come out when you think they ought to come out because you think you want a baby. They come out because a prophet is a prophet from birth. So what God is saying to the women of God in this house, do not despise small beginnings. It doesn't matter how many of y'all are here. But I looked on that program and I saw us a prayer meeting coming up on Tuesday. And I just came to provoke you because I want y'all to tear some stuff up for God on Tuesday in this prayer meeting. I want you to understand that God wants to hear from each and every woman in this house when it comes to that prayer meeting. So I don't know what you got scheduled or I don't know what time you get off of work. But if you haven't been to prayer, I'm asking that you come this Tuesday because God wants to do something in this house. And the fire is going to start with the women of God in this house because it doesn't take but a few to turn some stuff upside down. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. I know y'all feel the enemy provoking y'all up there. You got to feel him provoking y'all. You got to feel him trying to say, well, how we going to go start another service on Sunday and we ain't got our own building? Y'all got to feel the enemy trying to provoke you and trying to throw up the insults and trying to say, well, you ought to be here by now. And man, we thought we would have had this by now. You ought to hear him provoking you. But if you hear him provoking you, I need you to respond in prayer. I need you to use the word of God and say, oh, God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should have to repent. If he saw it, will it not be done? He ain't mocked. That's right. Come on. He knows what your leaders have been praying. Yes. He knows what they have been believing. Yes. But I just need a few women to get behind them. Yes. I just need a few women yes. to say, I'll turn down my plate, God. I'll allow you to provoke me, God. I'll give you a fast, Jesus. I'll pray to you, oh God. I'll come in prayer on Tuesday, already having gone through the word of God and searched out my scriptures, ready to hit some things that I know. The enemy has been provoking this house. In. So, verse 7 says, And as he did so year by year, she went up to the house of the Lord. So she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. See, there's a difference between weeping because you have no hope and not eating because you're just overwhelmed with sorrow. And there's a difference between weeping because you feel the joy of the Lord in your spirit and you feel God's about to do a new thing and it's going to spring forth speedily. Amen? Y'all catch that. That was prophetic for this house. God's about to do a new thing. And it's going to spring forth speedily. So I hear him say, God's getting ready to raise up some prayer warriors. And he's going to do it speedily. Because all it takes to pray is the word of God, baby. You don't need nothing deep and delicious. 
Now, I know everybody got seven and 12 and 13 and 15,000 keys to pray, but all you need is the 66 books of the word of God, and you go through, you open this word, and you pray it. So if I took a scripture and I say, mm, oh, taste and see that God is good. Lord, let uplift, taste and see how good you are to them, oh God. Let their enemies not mock them, Lord God. Chase their enemies, Lord God, and not let one of them escape. I could say, oh, God, you've never failed. I'm using the word of God. And the word of God, God responds to that. He responds to his word. He doesn't respond to our emotions, y'all. God is just saying, I'm about to send an electrical surge through this house and prayers coming forth like never before. He's taking the ceiling off right now in the name of Jesus. When it comes to prayer, you're about to break through a ceiling. When it comes to prayer. Hallelujah. So I just need a few people who know they've been having some dreams and seeing some stuff concerning uplift, but you don't know what to do with it. I just need you to take what you saw, find it in the word, and pray the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So she kept provoking her. But it says that God shut up Hannah's womb. He shut it up. That's what it said in verse 6. He shut up her womb. Now with other women, they might just say, oh, and she was barren. That was it. You don't get anything else. But with Hannah, he shut it up. And again, he shut it up because of what she was birthing. She was birthing a prophet. And understand that as God begins to increase that prayer on the inside of y'all, you're gonna be able to speak prophetically concerning some things that God wants to do in this house. But God right now is just trying to teach you and he wants you to know that praying the word works. Don't stop no matter what. It doesn't matter what you're faced with. It doesn't matter how intense it gets. Prayer works. I'm a living witness. Let me just give you a few testimonies about the little Alabama girl who started out at UAB with not a dime in her pocket. All I knew to do was to sign up and to get out of Montgomery. So that's what I did. My sister was at UAB, so I followed her and I was like, all right, I'll go there. She's there. My mom won't gonna let me go anywhere else anyway. So I get there though, and around that Junior to going into senior year, I began to notice that I was different. I began to notice that, Lord, why do things bother me that don't bother other people? Why do I know even if I leave the club at 5 a.m. that I'm going to be in 8 a.m. service? Now, was that right? I ain't saying that right. I just knew, though. There was a conviction on the inside of me that says, no, nah, this ain't right. You, would, you better take your tail to church. So, I saw God do some mighty things in my life, y'all. I remember I didn't know how to pray for real, for real. Grew up in a church, went to church all my life, but I never knew how to pray for real. But I can remember that, what I call that first level of prayer, I remember sitting in my apartment and I remember saying, God, you know I don't have my tuition money. God, I don't know how I'm going to register. You know I don't have it. What am I going to do? I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. So I prayed to him. I said, well, if I'm supposed to be in school this semester, you'll send it to me. So I'm sitting there, and I go in one of my classes the next day because I'm in the class illegally because I ain't paid yet. <laughs> but I didn't went by faith because I'm going to believe God going to do something. So I get in there and I start talking to one of my teachers and I was like, you know, I may have to, you know, just drop because I don't have the money. And she said, how much is your tuition? And I told her and she paid it. She paid it. It was about $1,300. She wrote me a check on the spot. I took it over to the bursar's office and she paid it. So don't tell me prayer doesn't work, y'all. 
prayer doesn't work, y'all. So it started with just that little prayer. And then I decided, I said, well, God, if that worked, well, I might, you know, I, I should keep trying this thing to see what happened. But I can, I can remember, I can remember when he took me from just praying out of head knowledge and I began to sit down and I began to hear him give me certain topics and I would say okay let me pray this topic where can I find it I would get my uh, concordance out and all my study aids and I would find that word in every scripture listed under that topic and I would find the ones that stood out to me and I would begin to pray them y'all I'm telling you this to tell you it's just that simple now I had like seven or eight books that I had to have stretched out but now we have the convenience of these iPads and these iPhones and technology that has all those resources that were so expensive back in the day online for free. So I'm telling you that to say it don't take much to go to the next level of prayer. It just takes a willing heart. Do I have any willing women in here tonight who say, God, I will study before you, God. I will come to prayer ready, Lord God, with my scriptures ready to pray the word, God. I won't come in haphazardly, Lord God, or dreading it, or just checking the box. But I'm coming in ready. I'm coming in on go. Because I'm a part of this house. And God's going to do something in this house. Amen. Amen. So we know how that story went. We know Hannah gets her promise and she dedicates him to God and she gives him back to God. And, you know, she takes him and she wins him and then she takes him to the temple. And you know how that goes. But I want to shift gears a little bit. And I want to go to Genesis 29 because I just want to give you a few different examples of how God still hears you. Because when you understand and you can relate to some of the women in the Bible, you can relate your personal situations and circumstances to what they went through. Now, it may not be that you are barren, quote unquote, in the natural, but are there any barren spiritual areas in your life that are not flourishing the way that you know they need to flourish? Where are you barren? Be naked and unashamed before God because now is the time because y'all are women of virtue, right? And if you're a woman of virtue, the word says you're going to rise early and you're going to pray and your household are gonna, is going to cause you blessed. So all I'm saying is it's no need to cover up what God already knows. So if you know you've been barren in prayer, if you know you've been barren when it's come to studying and reading your word, then you just repent right now under your breath between you and God and you say God I want to get this thing right because I don't have to be barren I don't have to be fruitless when I'm sitting in a house that's fruitful because I know you're getting the word I know you're being taught the rich word of truth through the man of God in this house but activate that thing don't just eat and not go home and study what you've learned because that's how you grow in prayer you grow when you hear the word how can they hear without a preacher except he be sent you got the preacher you got the man of God who ain't trying to fleece the flock he ain't promoting his agenda He's not asking you to stand in a line and give three and four thousand dollars in to bring your kids tuition. He's not asking you to do that. He's just asking you to live and to walk out the word of truth because he's seen it manifested in his own life. Do I have any women in this house today that will be naked and on the shame because we'll cover it up with Maybelline and Mac all day long. But God is saying, I need you naked and on the shame tonight because I need you to come to prayer ready. Hallelujah, Lord God. Somebody just give God a shout of praise. Glory to his name. Genesis chapter 9. We're going to shift gears. Chapter 29, verses 30 through 35. It says, And he went in also unto Rachel, And he loved also Rachel more than Leah and served with him yet seven other years. And when the Lord saw that Leah was hated, he opened her womb. But Rachel was barren. Verse 32. 
And Leah conceived and bare a son, and she called his name Reuben, for she said, Surely the Lord hath looked upon my affliction. Now therefore my husband will love me. Verse 33. And she conceived again and bare a son, and said, Because the Lord hath heard that I was hated, he hath therefore given me this son also. And she called his name Simeon. Verse 34. And she conceived again and bare a son and said, Now this time will my husband be joined unto me, because I have borne him three sons. Therefore, his name called Levi. And she conceived again and bare a son. And she said, now I will praise the Lord. Before, therefore, she called his name Judah and left barren. So we got another woman. Two women, actually, but I just want to focus on Leah. Rachel get a lot of play. But I want to focus on Leah. I want to focus on the tender-eyed one. Because that's what the Bible called her. It says she was tender-eyed. Now, when I get to heaven, I'm going to say, Jesus, can I please see Leah? Because I want to see what tender-eyed <laughs> mean. I got, uh, you know, something in my mind, but I just really want to see. Okay. <laughs> Let me focus. So, Leah, the Lord said he saw how she was hated. She was hated. She was hated, and he opened up her womb. Now, I just need to talk to a few Leahs today who were put in situations that they didn't expect to be put in. Leah didn't expect to marry Jacob. Jacob wanted Rachel. So she got put into a situation that she didn't even expect to be in. She got put into a situation where, in essence, she had to marry this man, and he didn't even know that he was going to marry her. So she was already going into a situation that was not going to be working in her favor. She was already going into a situation where she wasn't going to be loved to begin with. Nobody wants to go into anything second rate. Nobody wants to come in knowing they're number two. Nobody wants to come into a situation knowing that they ain't light. So God says, I'm going to open her womb. I'm going to make her fruitful. I'm going to open it up for her. But the thing that stands out to me is I don't understand why Jacob was so mad at Laban about making the switch. Because did he not? intentionally do some things with Esau and steal that birthright yeah. and make the switch yeah. and didn't expect it to come back to him. Yeah. So now you mad and now you going to unleash all this world of hate upon this woman when you know you did the same thing. So she's got to live with the stuff you're throwing off on her. I just want to talk to some women today who have been living through some stuff that has been thrown off on you that don't even belong to you and you ain't even have nothing to do with it. But you're carrying it around. You're carrying it around. You didn't land on Plymouth Rock, right? <laughs> Plymouth Rock landed on you. So, you didn't ask for that uncomfortable situation. You didn't ask to be touched in an improper way growing up. You didn't put yourself in certain circumstances, but you've had to deal with them. And God is saying, I've come to heal the broken heart. Yeah. If he came to see and he saw how much she was hated and she said, because and he said, because she's hated, I'm going to do this for her. But the glorious thing about what he did for Leah, even though she was hated, she kept going through and she kept having babies. And oh, yeah, God saw my affliction after she had Reuben and this and then the other. But she finally gets to the place when she has Judah and she says, now I will praise the Lord. God is saying no matter what you 
you've gone through. And even though many are the afflictions of the righteous, the Lord delivers him out of them all. He is saved. But now it's time to praise the Lord. Yeah. Now it's time to put aside those weights and those things that so have so easily beset you and those things that have been coming against you, whether it's that hate, whether it's that disdain or that dislike for you. You don't know why you the person that don't nobody like all the time. You don't know why you the person that folk are just automatically jealous of. You racking your brain trying to figure this thing out and God is saying it's because of what you're carrying on the inside. Yeah. I just need some women to know you are carriers of the word of God on the inside of you. You don't have to stand behind a pulpit to preach. Your life should be a testimony. Your life should be the word of God coming out in everything that you do. But she says, now I will praise the Lord when she has you. Now she says it's not about a man. It ain't about a man now. It's about me loving God now, baby. Baby, I done got over that this man don't want me regardless. And now, God, I just want you. I just need to know if there's some women in here tonight who just want God. Come on, single women. Come on, single women. Yeah, he getting Bo ready and Bo coming. And we praying for Bo to hit your life. But I need you to know that you just want to love God. That's for married women too. That's for married women too. Because you still got to love God for your household to run white and for your household to be in order. God still has to be the priority. You still have to have time to slip away from the kids and the husband and get before God and say, God, here I am, naked and unashamed, coming before you on behalf of my family, Jesus. Carriers of the word. So again, you see two women who were barren, but God opened up their womb. And he had specific purposes for opening up their womb. For Hannah, he was sending a prophet through Leah. What was she birthing? She was birthing the tribes of Israel. Come on, she birthed Judah, y'all. She birthed praise, y'all. Come on, y'all. Gad, oh my God. She is sitting here birthing a nation that goes back to Abraham. Come on, y'all. So you think you're in a situation and it's about you, but God is saying you don't know what I'm birthing on the inside of you, but you can't birth nothing, baby, if you ain't willing to pray. It takes a bad woman to birth some stuff. And you ain't bad if you ain't got no prayer backing what you're asking God to birth. So we can shout hallelujah and I love it, but I want you to be sober because you have got to pray to get these things out and to see them come to pass. Lady Ashaki can't birth my baby. Lady Ashaki and Pastor Means can't birth y'all's baby. They can give you the road map and tell you what you do when you get in the delivery room. They can tell you what the pains might feel like, but can't nobody birth it but you. Take some of the pressure off of them and get on your knees and ask God for what it is that you need. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, I know y'all don't like to hear that. We don't like to hear that we have to pray on our own sometimes and we can't always run to the leaders to get them to pray for their stuff. But in the name of Jesus, you will not just have them pray and not pray for your own self. It's easy to ask somebody to pray for your stuff. How am I in the battle and you ain't in it? They praying harder than you. They're praying harder than you about your situation. And you laying down and watching TV. How is that right? How is that right? How is that right? That's not right. You got to birth this baby on your own. God opened up your womb for such a time as this. Now, if you want them and God to give the glory to them concerning 
What you couldn't birth, that's fine. That's your call. But get in your own fight. Get in your own battle. Don't expect them to do all the praying and all you do is cry. Don't expect them to do all the fasting. And you ain't Cheetos. Come on, y'all. You got to want this thing. Because God is provoking a lot of the women in this house. He's provoking you to go higher. And he's saying, baby, yeah, you see some things and you've had some dreams and some visions. But, yeah, you're going to have to put in the prayer work to make them come to pass. And that's all I came to tell you today was that God is trying to increase prayer in this house. Not that you haven't been praying, but God just wants to take it up to another level. Because understand, anytime you have to do something great for God, God, you got to pray for it. There should be prayer going on like the for the vision of this house like never before. Amen. Come on, anytime you're getting ready to step out and you're bold enough to tell the enemy, oh, we ain't just going to have one service. We're going to have a Saturday night service and a Sunday night service, baby. That's got to be undergirded with prayer, and it's not just on them. Yeah. Prayer that gets God's attention. So whining's not going to get his attention. Thinking about what you ought to pray ain't going to get his attention. Meditating on what you think. No, some down home, straight up, I'm a country girl, get on your knees, fold your hand, close your eyes, bow your head, and let's pray. And let me get in the word. Because when I get in the word, then it's provoking me. You can't tell me that sitting here and hearing God give us revelation about these two women being barren and then giving fruit that you didn't get any prayers for yourself and for this house. Because I know you did. Because God is faithful. So prayer is not just on them. They can't just shoulder the burden with the things that God has placed in their hearts to do. You got to have prayer that gets God's attention. Hannah got God's attention. She didn't get his attention. He did not open her womb when she was sitting there crying. No matter how many years she cried and no how many times she sat there and was like, oh, poor me, poor me. Oh, why are you looking on this and not doing it? No, it wasn't until she got on her knees, stole away by herself, and her heart began to cry out to God. That's when it changed for her. When is your heart going to cry out to God? When is your heart going to say, I'm tired of just going in here and looking cute and hearing these words and I ain't doing nothing with them? So I challenge you to go back to the word of God that's been preached in this house and the ones that you know have pricked your heart and all those cute little notes you wrote and stars and stuff in your journal. Go back and see what God wants you to pray concerning you and concerning this house. I'm looking to hear the testimonies on Tuesday. I'm ready for the fire of God to fall down in these prayer services. Don't come praying the same prayers every week. Come ready for the power of God to meet you there. But you do the work before you get there. Between tonight and between Tuesday, you ought to be able to say, God, what is my peace in Tuesday night's prayer service? And if you don't know your peace, that's fine. Say, Pastor Lionel, Lady Ashaki, how can I help? What do y'all want me to pray? Give me a topic. And I'm going to be faithful enough to at least do a Google search and put in love, and then here go a whole bunch of scriptures on love, and then here go a whole, come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that simple. Come on. Come on, y'all. You got to see what God is doing in this house, and God is just shifting the prayer. This house will be a house of prayer for God. Pray without ceasing. You don't stop just because you don't see it. But you come, and God is getting ready to provoke. I don't know who your prayer leader is. Who, who's, do y'all have a specific leader? Who? Y'all raise your hand. Okay. Okay. So prayer leaders, when you begin to get together and seek God and say, hey, what are our topics for this week? Provoke the people. 
tap a couple of people and say, hey, you, you pray, get you three scriptures under this topic and come in ready to pray. But God is saying he's about to strike a new fire under your feet like never before. Not that you hadn't been on fire before, but there's a new intensity. It's a new intensity because you gotta see what you're doing now and you gotta understand that this ain't about to go. He ain't gonna go without a fight, right? He's not gonna go without a fight. Again, you're talking about doing something unusual and uncommon. You're talking about having a service on a Saturday night and a Sunday. That requires more prayer for them. That requires more prayer for them. Because you have to labor to get these works. And they have to preach one on a Saturday night and then turn around and preach one on a Sunday morning. That ain't easy. Amen. So you got to be praying for stamina. You got to be praying for the strength of God. You got to be praying for the wisdom of God. Come on, y'all. Y'all hear what he's saying. I know he's talking to y'all. I can see him talking to both of y'all right now. And I'm not trying to leave out any prayer leaders, but I see him talking to the both of y'all right now. He's doing it. He's doing a new thing. And I decree it's going to spring forth speedily by the hand of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So do you mind if I just give a couple prophetic words? Okay. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord God. Amen. So... Again, God is doing a new thing in this house, but prayer has to be the bedrock and prayer has to be the foundation. Let me tell you how important it is. We started out in our homes with just myself, Pastor Abdullah, Samuel. We would get up. He was, we started in our house in Bible study on Wednesday nights. Pastor Abdullah would preach and it'd be me and Samuel there. Samuel wasn't even two years old. Turn on some praise and worship music. He'd be doing his thing. We waving flags and we get the word. And it went on like that for a while. Amen. (laughs) Amen. But we kept praying and we kept praying. And, you know, we were still attending our church at that time, but we knew we were supposed to do Bible studies at our home on Wednesday. And then God began to send people. And then Thomas Ann raised your hand. Thomas Ann came and she started coming. So then it was the three of us and Thomas Ann. And then next thing you know, a couple other people started coming. And then next thing you know, it was time to start full-fledged uh, service on Sundays. And we started out in Whitewater Elementary. And after Whitewater Elementary, and the janitor forgot to let us in a few Sundays. And we were standing outside in the hot sun after we had paid our money. We decided, Lord, you got to give us a bill. <laughs> So I'm saying all that to say uplift. When we got a building, we might have had 10 people. 10 people. We moved into a 6,900 square feet building with 10 people. Now, y'all wasn't nobody making six figures. (laughs) I can tell you that now. But people were faithful to give their tithes and to give their offerings. So it wasn't many of us sitting in this big building. And we get in there, and I said, well, Lord, you're going to have to show us what to tell these people because we don't have any money for any upfit. And we started praying. And I sat down with the guy, and I said, well, hey, can you get your company to pay this, and then we can give you this upfront cash? How did 10 people come up with $30,000-plus to do an upfit? Come on, y'all. That's prayer. And that's God manifesting his grace and his mercy. And we get in there and not one time, not one, did we ever miss a lease payment? Did a light ever get cut off? We helped people. I can remember we would pay people's bills. And I'm talking about some serious bills. But God did it. And we never lacked anything. And even to where he's put us now, almost 10,000 square feet, it still might be 50 consistently on a good Sunday. But we got some intercessors that'll walk through that church 
and will lay hands on those seats and say these empty seats are going to be filled. We got some people praying who have decided I will turn down my plate. I am on board. I'm a part of the core of what God is doing in his house. And I am determined to not let it go until I see it happen. And that's what God is doing in y'all. And I release it right now in the name of Jesus. The fervor and the consistently consistency to pray without ceasing to not just talk about it but to live it and to be it and to not think everybody else is supposed to pray except for you so point to yourself and say I am supposed to carry my weight as it relates to prayer for myself and this house and my leaders in Jesus name Amen.